Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And in particular, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be discussing in this video tutorial is what is it about Chassis Sim that makes it unique? As we go through this tutorial, you're actually going to find that there are a number of things that make Chassis Sim unique. So let's get started. Okay, when it comes to motorsport simulation, the industry standard is what's termed pseudo-static simulation. Now, the way that pseudo-static simulation works is it works off a static force balance. In particular, for the more technically minded of you, it uses something called the ambulance static approximation, where we take the transient forces and just represent them as a static force. Now, the way that pseudo-static simulation works is that it takes a circuit, chops it up to a number of little different bits, and takes snapshots of what the car is doing here, 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 and it, sim and it pieces it all together through the lap. Now, it has a number of advantages to it. Number one, because it's a static force balance, it executes very, very quickly. Also, two, it's simple, and in particular, to any engineering students who are listening to this, typically, one of the first things that you'll do in a, um, engineer in a motorsports vehicle dynamics course is that you will do some form of pseudo-static simulation code because it's relatively easy. The other thing that pseudo-static simulation has got going for it is that it'll give you a good idea of where to go in terms of downforce, it'll give you a rough idea on gear ratios, and it'll give you a first pass for what to expect in terms of springs, bars, and roll centers. And in terms of what does what, it's actually a very, very instructional tool in terms of what to expect in terms of sensitivities, etc., etc. However, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the full story. The key thing that Chassis Sim brings to the party, ladies and gentlemen, and it's one of its key planks of what makes it unique, is that Chassis Sim is fully transient simulation. Now, fully transient simulation in particular, where we take a path and we optimize transiently what the maximum performance of the car is going to be on a given path is acknowledged to be one of the holy grail of motorsport simulations. Now, here's the thing. Most F1 teams haven't cracked it, and a lot of OEM teams haven't cracked it. However, ladies and gentlemen, we in the Chassim community have been doing this for over 10 years, and here's what transient lap time simulation brings to the party, as you can see from the simulation snippet here. So we've got speed. That's the blue trace there is neutral steer. We've got steered angle, throttle, take a look at the tyre lows, take a look at how they are oscillating, ladies and gentlemen. That is bumps, and that is where pseudo-static lap time simulation runs out of steam. Now, let me give you an example of this. One of the things that's noted with pseudo-static lap time simulation is if you do not have local grip factors, you're dead in the water. One of the things, one of the exercises that we get our students to work through in the Chassis Boot Camp is that we'll give them an F3 example and some data, and we get them to create a curvature and a bump profile, and then we get them to simulate. And what's quite interesting, ladies and gentlemen, is that the correlation they get just with a curvature and a bump profile. And you should see the amount of draw dropping and light bulb moments that happen at that point. And that illustrates the resonant power that is in transient lap time simulation and why it gives you a much more complete picture than what you will get with pseudo-static lap time simulation. Now, at its core, ladies and gentlemen, Chassis Sim has a full multi-body vehicle dynamic model that's integrated using a six order cache carp algorithm. Now, while that sounds awfully impressive, what that means in plain English is the only way you're going to get better than that is to run the car on the circuit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very key point. And as we can see here, while this particular drawing isn't going to win any um, art prizes, what that is, is it's a full parameterization of what a car looks like, which is why Chassis Sim can do cars as diverse as F1 cars, right, front, right down to passenger cars because that is its numerical core, ladies and gentlemen. Think of it like the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. It may not look like much, but it's got it where it counts. The other thing that Chassim brings to the party is it's got a very, very highly detailed vehicle model that allows you to drill down in terms of what's going on in terms of aero, tire forces, which is a thermomechanical tire model, dampers, 
and a 3D engine map as a case in point. However, one of the things that Chess Sim also comes with is a number of pre-made templates, so you can just load those templates and get going. Also too, for any novice, novice simulation users who are using this, one of the things that we also instruct in our boot camps is start simple, get, get detailed later. Do not do it the other way around, you will get lost. The other thing that Chess Sim brings to the party is its ability to interact with race data. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the great gray areas of when we deal with race engineering and motorsport vehicle dynamics is the two gray areas that you will always deal with are tires and aerodynamics. That is a given. Now, one of the great powers of Chassis Sim is using the Tire Force Modeling Toolbox and the Aero Modeling Toolbox. We can use the race data to fill in those blanks and that ladies and gentlemen is absolutely critical but more importantly ladies and gentlemen you can export that data out to um, your data analysis package of choice wherever it be Wintax, Motec, Pi, Bosch, Amory Studio Analysis, Mc, um, McLaren's um, Atlas whatever you're using chances are Chassis Sim will talk to it. Now the transient lap time simulation the ability to interact with race, da race data and the ability to export out to a data analysis package of your choice each of those on their own is a very very core is a very very core requirement but the fact that chassis sim combines that into a one two three punch is a tool that you'd be crazy not to leave home without so why bother with this ladies and gentlemen here's why when you've done your job right this is the correlation you should expect actual is colored Black is simulated. We have speed, throttle, front dampers, rear dampers, steer, lateral acceleration, inline G, front roll, front roll and rear roll. That, ladies and gentlemen, illustrates the resonant power that you have with chassis sim. And you are absolutely crazy if you leave home without this. Because once you get something like this, it allows you to make decisions based on fact rather than supposition. It also gives you the bedrock to give you the confidence to know where to go with the car. That ladies and gentlemen, uh, that ladies and gentlemen is why this is so powerful. So in review, the thing that makes Chassis Sim unique is the one, two, three punch of its transient um, numerical engine that gives you the ability to do transient lap time simulations. It has a highly detailed vehicle model. It can use race data extensively and it can export that out to a data analysis package of your choice. And the correlation, ladies and gentlemen, is industry standard. I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, when you start using Chassis Sim, once you've got the car dialed in, correlation will never be your problem. That's a given. However, ladies and gentlemen, don't take my word for it. If you're new to simulation, check out our online simulation tab and get going and find for yourself why Chassis Sim is the winner's edge and we'll catch you in the next Chassis Sim video tutorial.